Welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are thrilled that you are joining us today and spending some time here. Our guest today is Jacqueline Tizo, founder and CEO of JMT Consulting. She is bringing back the curtains, and we are talking about dealing with your nonprofit financial anxiety and how she can help you dump that financial fear. So stay with us because Jacqueline has some great insight to share with us in regards to finances. And here's a little sneak peek of what we'll be covering today origins of where that fear might be coming from, how to ask for the information you're seeking, what type of financial information you're looking for. And the the lovely, I love this one, is like, let's level set our expectations and the response of that expectation. So um, that is what Jackie's brought to us today. We also want to remind you who we are, if we've not met yet, Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy is here, and I am Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd and CEO of The Raven Group. Julia and I are so very proud to have the ongoing support from these amazing presenting sponsors, so shout out of immense gratitude goes to our friends at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, 180 Management Group, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, JMT Consulting, again, where Jackie's from. Also, thank you to Nonprofit Nerd and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Again, thank you to these companies that allow us these conversations. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, here's where you can find them. Go ahead and pull out your smartphone, scan that QR code, download the app. And if you uh, want to find us, you can still see us on broadcast and podcast channels. So Jackie, we are thrilled to have you with us today. Again, for everyone watching and listening, we have with us today, Jacqueline Tizo. She is the founder and the CEO of JMT Consulting. Welcome to the nonprofit show, Jackie. Well, thank you so much. I am so excited to be joining you and I love this topic. (laughs) Good. Good. We're thrilled to have you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jackie, and a little bit about JMT Consulting before we dive deep into our financial fear. Well, I am uh, what I like to describe as a double geek in that I am an accountant and I love technology. Uh, I started JMT because I worked in a number of nonprofits and I saw how important technology was Mm -hmm. and how it could help the organizations I worked for. And I just started working more and more. And so now I am all about the intersection of the two. That's fantastic. It is fantastic, Jared. And it's um, it's so desperately needed because yes. of all these different things that we're going to talk about today. And, you know, Jared always says this. It's, you know, the scarcity mentality, fear. A lot of times these emotions override all logic right? And so let's start off. Why do we fear these people and these departments? We were teasing with you in the green room that we think that these, the financial departments always get like the worst office space in the building. And they're like in the back where it's dark. Jarrett said, yeah, so they can turn down you know, the lights, close the blinds and shut the door. I mean, why is this? <laughs> well, I think that it's, you know, such a key thing Uh, I'm an accountant myself. Uh, I happen to love it. Um, But I also know such responsibility. There's so much information out there. There are so many requirements and regs. And so that focus of doing the job and making sure I do it correct, and it has to be perfect, right? You can't say, oh, it's okay if I do halfway. (laughs) Um, I don't have to do that report if it's only half done. Uh, (laughs) You don't have that sort of option. So, you know, we're coming from that kind of space. And I think that applies to others who are not accountants where they understand and they're looking at it. And sometimes it can be intimidating because all this knowledge of the numbers and what they mean is held in someone's head. And you're going to them wondering, okay, can I ask the right question? Do I know what it is that I even need? Uh, they're the keepers. Uh, does the information have to be perfect for me? All of those kind of things come into play. So I'm going to ask you like a gut check question. 
and you got to be honest on this. <laughs> when somebody ever came into your office and asked you a question, did you always go, did you ever go, oh my God, they are idiots. Why are they asking me that? Or because I feel like that's sometimes what we're afraid of. We're afraid of appearing to be, you know, dumb to use that word, which I don't like that word, but we're such high performers in programming or fundraising or C-suite, whatever, except for this one area. Yes. And, you know, Julia, I, I think you're absolutely correct. I think that it, that is a very real uh, fear uh, mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, you know, in my family, my husband, financial management of our home finances, uh, he's like, oh, no, I could never do it. You need to do it. And, <laughs> and I think that that just is the case in so many environments and in, in organizations, we have things that we're very good at doing. Our program managers, our grant managers, our CEOs, so good at delivering on the mission of the organization. And that whole numbers thing can be very, very scary. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's a difficult thing. And then finance, I think, also makes it harder because a lot of times, and for a very long time, finance was about uh, everything has to be perfect. We can't release any information unless it's absolutely perfect. And so that holding it very, very close, I think it also is a symptom. Interesting. Well, let me ask you this, like, how do we ask and get the information we are seeking? And, you know, nonprofits are governed by a fiduciary board. Uh, several members of the board, right? And so I see this all the time. And Jackie, I have seen CEOs, co-founders say this, gosh, I hope no one asks me questions about the financials yeah. because I don't know what to say. Like, and they are the bookkeeper. They are the accounting person. They are the CEO, right? Yeah. And so for these small shops, it's like, Oh gosh, that's really scary to hear. <laughs> so how do we ask and get the information that we're looking for? Well, I think, you know, it's us being able to ask for the information, but I also think there's a shift that needs to happen within the finance uh, offices and environment itself as well. Um, part of that is I look at the finance office as being a service department for the rest of an organization. And the customers of that finance department are the program managers, the grant managers, the CEO, board members, funders, everyone. And mm -hmm. part of that delivery of that service uh, and that product of information is that the information has to be uh, understandable for who you're delivering it to. And so part of the transition that I think is happening in the finance area is that more and more organizations are not looking at just sort of the traditional, oh, I need a statement of revenue and expenses, you know, statement of activities. Uh, what really is the meaningful information that I can give to my customer, that grant manager, that program manager, and way beyond just sort of paying bills or getting a, uh, you know, a statement of revenue and expense, but really information that's helpful to the organization and to that individual. And then on the individual side, it is about going in and sitting with finance and asking for just English language. Um, I need to know how much money I have left in that grant. <laughs> <laughs> right. Opposed to numeric language. Is that is that the yes, opposition? Just, yes. <laughs> you know, Jackie, I have spent the majority of my life as a fundraiser in the sector. And I, I've owned up on this on the show before. Yeah. Finances is not my language, right? But I have had to train myself to understand yes. and to ask these questions and to really own up and say, look. This isn't my zone of genius. Help me understand this because as a fundraiser, I need with integrity to be able to represent our numbers through a yes. narration form. And that is so important. You know, you're speaking to one of the key points that I think uh, is starting to come more and more to the surface. 
the yeah. financial information in and of itself, a financial statement, that's not enough. It really is about telling the story of the organization and not just telling the story externally, right, to funders, mm -hmm. but internally to everyone working mm -hmm. at your organization helping everyone to understand what is the story and that the, the numbers are just helping to reinforce and make a visual, if you will, okay. of that story. Yeah. And that's so a very hard thing. It's a very hard thing. And, and I'm very visual. So my head is going to the old school Mad Libs where it's like, okay, here's where I'm looking for, fill in an ad adjective, a noun, a verb, a whatever. So like what types of information are we seeking to build out this narration of, of the number story? Can you help us identify that? Sure. So, so many times organizations look at, uh, you know, a revenue number and then their expense number. And it's just that, you know, yep. straightforward. I call it cold. Uh, it's not connecting with the story. Mm -hmm. What we always talk to clients about is the statistical, demographical, all of that information is as important, if not more so, in alignment and together with the financial information. So when I look at, you know, uh, looking at an organization's financials, I want to see side by side, how many people have we served? How many clients? How many meals? What locations are we in? Yes, we have these dollars we spent, but side by side with them should be the impact of what our organization is doing. Imagine how much that resonates more than just showing a P&L that says, okay, here's your monthly expenses, your year end expenses, you know? So that information is so important. And also some calculations, like how effective overall funding expenses to the results we're delivering, how effective are we really being? Um, you know, it doesn't want, I don't want to see just dollars alone. Yeah. You know, that's very interesting because I feel like this is one of those areas where we don't have a central place where information resides. You know, it's like, well, programming knows that. Okay, well, accounting, finance, they know that. I mean, the fundraisers, they know this. And it seems like we don't do a good enough job trying to internally share our information so that we can each also be using that information together. And I don't know what your sense is on that, but that just seems to me like um, a strategy that a lot of our departments take because they're they're not working together. And, and you're absolutely correct, Julia, I, you know, um, technology has come such a long, long way. And yeah. we wouldn't, we now have the ability to have the information on the impact and along with the dollars, um, with the technology that we have today. Uh, and nonprofits are, are slowly trying to move in that direction because in when you move into that direction with the technology, you eliminate the silos of information that exists within organizations, and you truly can get to a what I call a one source of truth that crosses all departments and where all the information, both the dollars and the impact, can be in, in a single database. Now, does that mean you don't have a donor management uh, program? Absolutely not. You have the solutions you need for each area of the organization, but they truly are talking to each other and they are coming into that one source of truth system. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm an accountant, for me, that's a finance system. <laughs> so <laughs> I want my finance platform to be able to give it all to me. Um, yeah. But you really do need to have that one source of truth. Okay, well, yeah. then I'm going to push you a little on that because I love your phrase, source of truth. Yeah. That <laughs> resonates huge with me. But would you let somebody from programming into your system in, into your system to get information? Absolutely. Uh, 100%. Really? Yes. Okay, mind yes. blown. Because yes. I would be like, oh, no, I don't want anyone to screw up 
what I'm doing. Oh, no, you let them have visibility. And with visibility, we're empowering people okay. uh, to be creative, to be insightful in yeah. information. And this is a really big shift for finance departments and even finance leaders, because as I said earlier, there is sort of this, you know, like hands off. We yeah. we can't open up and release this information too soon. Yeah. But visibility yeah. provides an environment for people to see how are we doing and where do I yeah. need to shift a little bit here to the left or to the right versus waiting, even even waiting just 10 days to see something is too long in my estimation. Yeah. Well, you know, I really see the finance department as the backbone of the entire organization because it can, like that is where you bring the data. That's where you can make data-driven decisions, not right. passion, not heart, not gut, like data-driven decisions from there you can identify how do we steward these donors? How do we take action and impact on the programming? Like that is the steering wheel. And until we as a sector start to really understand that and stop putting the finance team in the back corner with the lights off and, yes. you know, you can only come out for lunch and that's 15 <laughs> minutes, you know, like it really is, as you said, like that, that's, what did you say? The source of truth? One yes, source? Truth. source of truth. One source of truth. Yeah, source of truth. So um, we don't have tons of time, but I know we've got a couple of more talking points here. And um, you're a double geek and I'm a nerd. So we could talk about this forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have. A Let's talk about some normalcy around responses and in particular time and data, Jackie. Uh, what does that look like? Well, you know, um, Typically, there are two issues that are that get in the way of you know financial information. There is either too much data or the other side of the coin, too little data. And then we also have the time required. Yeah. So those two issues are constantly battling uh, with it, each other. The mm -hmm. The time and the data. So I'm going to do time first because here again, technologist geek. Uh, the time one is one that can be addressed with technology. Uh, right yes. now, so many organizations, uh, and this is for profit and nonprofit. This is not a nonprofit only challenge. Um, we throw people at a issue at a a function we need to do. Our minds don't immediately go to, how can we automate this? Is it possible to automate this so that I can take this individual and then let them engage in work that's more fulfilling for them and for the organization? Technology will help us streamline and gains us time. And we all know uh, time is money, right? We're, we're paying a person. If we add staff, the very first thing I, I look to do is if we're looking to add staff, do we need to or add staff or could we take an investment of those dollars and bring our technology up and eliminate manual effort and tasks? And also we want more data, but there's no point in having more data if you can't get to it or use yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, right. It's a fool's errand. And I think yes. I think that's become a major frustration in nonprofit management. Yes. I mean, we we we're we want to chase the data. We want the data. We chase it ever or more viciously. Uh it's always a it eludes us because there's too much work involved in utilizing that data. Plus, we are looking for well, how do I use that data? Mm -hmm. And what I really talk to organizations about is the forward perspective of data, right? Mm -hmm. It's not a snapshot right now or what happened before. Let's take that data as it's feeding in live and project forward for a forward focused perspective. Mm -hmm. Imagine what we would do if, if we if we assist, if our systems every day, every month were updating and forward focusing and saying to us, this is where we think you're gonna be in three months, in six months, if you stay on this right. trend. 
That's right. Yeah. That data is huge. You can't do that if you're just relying on the time element of the manual, because it's just not humanly possible. Our poor, our poor finance teams are working with the speed of everything else coming in at, you know, at the speed of lightning. And mm -hmm. they just don't have time for doing this other level of work. So I'm like, automate everything you possibly can and use your team to then do that innovative, that forward focused thinking. But Jackie, you know, this is such an interesting, you said in the very beginning, this is a shift in mindset. Yes. I mean, you're, you're having, you're going to have to go back as a finance department and finance team and kind of reshape what everybody else should, how they should be thinking. Correct. That's yes. to me fascinating. That's a fascinating thing because we generally don't include finance in these generative discussions. And you're you're absolutely correct. And I think here again, there is a, a tide. We're we're really at the sort of beginning of this tide that's coming. And yeah. I, finance is going to catch up a hundred percent. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful and exciting thing, and so productive for the organizations, for the leaders of those organizations, and for every one of the staff and finance members of those organizations. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say, Jackie, is I'm seeing the best success with my clients that have a forward thinking leadership team. Mm -hmm. And that includes their board to say, yes. OK, let's forecast, you know, where would we be in six months and 12 months um, going back to COVID? You know, Julia, we had a lot of guests come in and say, so we created our budget and we're revising it quarterly. Right. Because there's just too many changes. Mm -hmm. And now there's this huge loss of funding from COVID, you know, pandemic funding from the government that is being um, lost and, and not really, you know, brought back through individuals or other grants or contracts, Jackie. So really looking at this from a, and I love a good forecast, the yeah. forecast cash flow of, okay, this is where we are today as a snapshot. But what does that mean for 90 days, 120 days, 240 days? And I'm curious if you see a huge thought partner in this, because I do, mm -hmm. and the fundraising piece, right? Because when it comes to some of the trends is um, monthly donors, like that's a huge trend right now. That is a forecasting element that, that coincides with, with finance. Yes. Are you seeing that more and more? And I am starting to see it. And um, and it's a it's a great thing. Uh, but we are, as I said, it's a sea change. Yeah. And, it, it. You know, <laughs> and so mm -hmm. and the and the other part of that sea change is, you know, our poor uh organizations, they're uh in a rowboat yeah. when it comes to like the technology. When you want to be forward uh, <laughs> you know, focused. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't do this stuff in Excel. You, no. you know, you just can't make it happen right. in Excel uh, unless you had one or two people. And that's all they did all day long was doing these updates and all the whole bit. So here again, technology is another tool, another arrow in the quiver of being able to create this environment, get information in uh, from the, the donor management fundraising systems, from the advanced department from the programs, seeing trends of what's happening. And if we did a 2% increase over here, you know, more and more organizations, their services are more and more and more in demand, as you ladies know, their funding is not keeping up. So strategic decisions have to be made for these organizations. And you need that forward focus to be able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I have another question. Um, if we're listening, we're a nonprofit leader, board leader, whatnot, and we're, you know, totally vibing with what you're sharing, Jackie, but we realize our organization is simply not doing this. What's our first step? Like, how do we take yeah. that, that boat and make a one degree change to, to move the cruise ship, right? And that's what it yes. takes, a one degree consistent change. Yes. Where do we start to make this change? 
Well, you know, I, I am reaching out to our clients and organizations uh, every day right now because we have our Innovate Conference. Yeah. And this is yes. a perfect place for an organization to get exposure to what are some of the trends that are coming, that are starting to build right now and are coming? What are the technologies that are available out there? Uh, listening to speakers that are focused on this sort of forward model and how to get started in that model. Um, so the very first thing is uh, our, our Innovate Conference, but also conferences are a huge um, area where organizations can get support um, and can get exposure. We then also have um, JMT and there's other organizations, firms that do this as well. Uh, we come in and talk to organizations about, you know, what is a technology strategy in alignment with the strategic goals and strategy of the organization? You know, most people talk about a technology strategy as if it's sitting out over here. And <laughs> <laughs> that is not how a technology strategy should happen. It should really be uh, aligned with the strategic goals of the organization, the mission, the vision, the culture of the organization. I love what you just said, because it, it brings it into the heart of the organization and makes it a partner and a working, uh, a working piece, as opposed to just something, like you said, that's kind of over there. It makes it central to how we think and how we process and how we manage. Um, so you mentioned um, Innovate 2024. How long have you been doing this? You're going to be in Boston uh, the first weekend or for the first week of May. Talk to us a little bit more about this. So this is, uh, we've been doing it for 19 years. Awesome. Yes. Um, it is open, of course, to our clients, but to all nonprofit organizations. Uh, we really focus on exactly what I was talking about before, really looking at providing expert insights, uh, industry trends, uh, glimpses into what the future of finance looks like. Uh, for example, uh, for this Innovate, we have the chief technology officer of SAGE uh, with us, uh, Aaron Harris. He is truly a leader and innovator. Uh, and we're going to be speaking about AI. Everyone's talking about AI, but we're going to actually bring it down into what it really means for, you know, organizations. Awesome. Yes. This will be really Would you fun. say earlier, like in just plain English, just break, break it down in English. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love exactly. it. I love it. Well, this has been great. I, I think the thing that I've really enjoyed today, Jackie, um, has been the approachability and the logic behind looking at this in a new way. And I, I think when you said in the beginning, and, and I'll repeat it again, you know, finance has to change their mindset too, right? I mean, so yes. we all, we're all in this together. We are. As, as we navigate forward. You know, I'm thinking, uh, Jared, about Ellie Hume, uh, one of our friends from your part-time you. controller. And and some of those, lead, the leadership over there, they keep saying now is a good time to look at a career for a young person in finance because it's not just the general ledger. It has a lot of strategic aspects. It has a lot of implementation. It's forward moving. It's forward thinking. And uh, Jackie, you kind of, I don't know, bubbled that up to the surface today. So Jacqueline Tizo, founder and CEO of JMT Consulting. Check out jmtconsulting.com where you can learn more about their amazing team and the work that they do all over North America and Australia, correct? Yes. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, it has been a delight to have you here and to talk about all these amazing things. As it is, we have amazing sponsors that allow us to have these conversations. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. Again, these folks come together so that we can have um, these amazing conversations. Uh, we've had more than a thousand shows, which we 
reached uh, last Tuesday, our thousandth episode. Ah. I'm glad we passed it because it's it's a hard thing for me to say, Jarrett, thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And, and now, now we get to go on to say thousand and however many, you know, yeah. four. <laughs> That is wonderful. Well, thank, well you. thank you. Thank you so much, Julia and Jared. I loved our conversation and I hope we can pick it up again. We will. Well, we We're sure gonna... will. And the nerd in me totally sees the geek in you. So <laughs> we, we are on this together, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you. It's been amazing. You know, every episode we like to end with this, with this uh, message. And Jared and I laugh all the time about how it takes on a different spin and, and I hear it differently. And I know she hears it differently. I'm going to say this to all the financial teams out there. And that is to stay well. So you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow. 